So what's going on YouTubers, DIY Dan again, and today we're gonna to be building and installing some pallet doors. So this is the second set of pallet doors that I've made. This is actually a dual door. I made a single before. Uh, I'm gonna go over some of the, uh, the helpful hints that I've used doing these and some of the mistakes I've made as well. So hopefully you guys don't make the same mistakes I did. Uh, this is kind of the pattern and then we're gonna cut all this excess trim off and then lay it back on there and make sure we still like it. So just so I wasn't measuring all the time, I put a wood stop so all my pieces are the exact same length on my miter saw. Alright, so I cut off all those end pieces and uh, put them right next to each other, kind of give us an idea of what it's going to look like. Since I don't have a planer, which would be ideal, uh, what I've done is I've strapped the door down because I don't have it anchored to anything at this point, so I'm using a strap to hold it down so I can run a belt sander on it and get the real high spots off the wood so the outer trim uh, anchors up to it nicely. So since this pallet wood has so many imperfections guys, I did a final sand and I used this foam block because it will contour to the imperfections in the wood. Now I'm setting my front trim up there and uh, the wife really likes this piece of uh, this piece of wood right here, so I'm definitely going to use it. However, if you notice, it is quite thicker than the other pieces of front trim that I'm using. So I'm going to trim this one down on my table saw to make it the same height. Alright, so uh, i got the feather board all set up. I'm going to run this through. Now obviously I can't cut the full height of this in one cut. So we're going to take it nice and slow the first time and uh, run it through about halfway. All right, so I'm anchoring all the trim around the outer edge here. Uh, I'm using liquid nail, and the reason for that is liquid nail will stay tall um, and fill the voids because obviously this isn't a perfectly flat surface. So that's the purpose for using the liquid nail. It's not quite as strong as uh, wood glue, but it's going to hold up that bead so it will adhere on both sides. And I put the doors right next to each other to make sure all my cross beams and the trim looks uh, good next to each other. All right, so I decided to do an angle iron uh, trim around this. Uh, and that was because all of our slats are running horizontally. So these boards have a lot of flex to them. So if you don't do the steel, you need to run a vertical wooden slat all the way down the edge. Uh, I want to try and incorporate some steel, so I decided to go ahead and do the the metal frame around the edge instead. So this is the other single barn door I made out of pallets guys and this one's completely made out of wood and it is plenty stout enough. Uh, instead of the steel frame around the edge I had some 10 foot long pallets and I put a, a piece of pallet all the way from top to bottom and then also on the, tr on the side here I'll show you real quick there's also a piece of trim pallet material going from top to bottom as well on the edge. And this door is plenty stout enough also. Uh, if you don't feel like doing the steel, you can do it completely out of wood. So uh, what I did was basically cut a 45, use a square to mark a 45, cut this, set that on there, set my gap to the edge, mark the other side, cut that one, so forth and so on. So I tack welded all four corners together. And then I took it off of there and just welded them all together, ground them down, and then basically put them back around the edge here. So 
So what I've done above the door is I went ahead and used some little nails and I put those in place exactly where I'm going to anchor my studs. You can see the little couple extra holes I've got. That was to verify that I was dead center on my stud. And a couple here, that's all going to be covered up by the rail so it doesn't really matter anyways. Alright, I marked those all the way down and that way I can measure out at what length I need to drill my holes for my rail exactly. Uh, the first barn door I hung, I went ahead and ordered the rail off of Amazon. Uh, but my holes for my studs didn't line up and I had to modify it anyway. So on this one, I just decided to make my own. Uh, I did have some do some welding on this. So you might have to go on Amazon and get your own, obviously. However, I do highly recommend getting an extra bar to put against the wall because uh, when they send you rails, a lot of the times they just put spacers for you and there's just not much material going against the drywall and with a heavy door. I've actually seen it happen at a buddy of mine's house. The drywall started cracking and the door started leveraging because uh, he had a heavy door and it was just the spacers pushing up against the drywall and started pressing the spacers into the drywall, all right? So just watch out for that. And all you've got to do is get another piece of flat bar or another rail and put it against here so the, the drywall's got this whole back surface of the entire rail and you won't have that issue. Okay, so I clamped my two rails together and then I drilled the holes through at my measurements that I got off the nails in the wall. Okay, then I went ahead and tacked my spacers and I just measured this out how much I needed to go, uh, my doors needed to hang out with that uh, the one roller on top how much I needed to space it out for it to ride on this outside rail I went ahead and tacked my spacers in okay on the one side only on every one then I went ahead and put a bolt through so when I put this other rail on I put all my bolts through so I know that's holding it nice and where it needs to be and then I tack welded the other side so I went ahead and pre-drilled all my holes in this outer rail now, um, we don't want to break out the wood on this other side. So what I'm going to do is go through with a small drill bit, okay? Like probably like an eighth inch. Then I'm going to go just barely through with a quarter inch because that's the size bolt I'm going through with on this side. I'm going to flip it over and run the quarter inch drill through the other side so I don't get any splinters coming out visually on the show side of this thing. So that's one of the holes I drilled through. And like I said, now I'm just going back with a bigger bit and going through. Look at how nice of a clean edge that leaves me. No splintering from having to come through that other side. So basically I just punched a bunch of holes in a piece of cardboard, put the bolts I'm going to use, which are quarter inch by two inches, uh, to hold these doors together in there and put the washers on top of there also and painted them. And now I'm just setting them in there. I'm using them just by hand holding them so I don't mess up the paint and tightening them down with a wrench on the other side. All right, so what we did is I put about an inch worth of wood underneath each of these doors, okay? To set my gap of where I wanted those to hang as far as the bottom goes. So I also put a three quarter inch piece of wood on the top to set my gap between the door and the rail. Uh, that gave me enough room that I can lift these doors on and off if I need to. I put a magnetic level up here and then I went ahead and anchored my rail in all the way across. So after you mount your rail, guys, uh, you're gonna wanna anchor your rollers in. Uh, this is one of the things that I messed up on. Uh, if you notice my top bolt here, I'm gonna go over to the other side. I had to grind the head of that bolt down because I put it too close to the angle iron and I had to do it to all four of my top bolts for my roller brackets. Uh, that was an easily avoidable thing. I could have moved my rail up and uh, that would have put, you know, my bolt through the angle iron or I could have possibly lowered this just a little bit and had it miss it completely. So that was one mistake I did make uh, that was easily avoidable and I should have caught. So one other thing I did for safety reasons, guys, is I put this bolt through here uh, just drilled a hole through the roller bracket, got a nut and a bolt, and I tightened this down. Uh, the reason I did this is, 
I've got big dogs, I've got kids. I didn't want the possibility of them hitting this door and this roller popping off by accident and the door falling off on them. So if they do hit this, the bottom, the top of this bolt's gonna hit the bottom of the rail before the roller has enough room to pop off the top of the rail. I did put these stops in uh, and that's to keep a nice uh, soft cushion for that to stop on instead of hitting the doors together. I also have one down at that end to keep it from falling into my fish tank and one at this end to keep it from nailing the wall. So all these stops are is these rubbers that I got at uh, any hardware store, you can get these. A 3 8 bolt that I painted the head on and a washer, lock washer and nut. And I just drilled the hole where I wanted to put the stop. The one other thing that I did is I mounted a couple casters on the bottom of these doors on the inside. You can't see them from the outside just to keep my bolts from possibly gouging into my baseboard. And I did push these against and bounce them against the drywall pretty hard and they don't leave a mark or anything. Uh, they, they barely even touch if I open the doors nicely, but I do have kids so I kind of wanted that as an insurance policy. And then just used some uh, screws and painted them black as well for the handles. Okay guys, so real quick, I'm gonna try and go over some of the mistakes that I made and uh, things that could have been avoided that I just didn't think of. So the first one is, is look at that level. I am off just that little bit, okay? Let me show you what happens because of that. So if I open this door just a little too fast, it rolls right back to shut, okay? Now what I actually did to correct that, and I don't know if this is gonna be my permanent solution or not, but you see a little piece of tape there? So you can't see it from, from the bottom, and I might even take some black Sharpie and just color over it. But I put that so the roller just kinda of hits that piece of tape and then it holds it nice. But I've gotta be careful not to open this door uh, too quickly, okay? So that was, one thing that I did mess up on, make sure you are just right on the money as far as uh, level goes, all right? And then obviously, even though I kind of went over it, is when I welded my rail together, when I welded these spacers in the first time, they were too tall, and as my roller was going over it, it was hopping over the spacers, okay? So make sure you your spacers are down low enough to miss the outside edge of the roller. So overall, guys, I'm really happy with this build. I hope you enjoyed it, and I uh, hope to see you next time. Have a good one. Later.